Yeah, well, I think the more significant ones uh, certainly, of course, would top with Korea. Uh, Re-entry of Korea has been very promising to us. Uh, you know, in a very short period of time, we've been able to re-establish ourselves with key customers. Um, there's a great appreciation for the Canadian brand and, and the food safety that comes with that. Um, you know, elsewhere around the world, you're, you're seeing some smaller niche opportunities, um, you know, in, in the Middle East regions and certainly in South America, Peru being one of them. And, uh, you know, there's some promise there. Um, I know um, uh, primarily when you look at the EU opportunity, that's a market that we're uh, anticipating with, with great optimism. Well, that's a good question. There's been some numbers thrown around and, you know, sometimes it's unfair to, to, to speak to a number. It creates um, an excitement. You know, it's kind of like the lottery and when you hear $30 million, you get all pumped up, right? But, um, you know, the, the numbers have been expressed as high as 200,000 metric tons, which I think is quite aggressive. I think we need to temper that a little bit. And, um, you know, there's a quota in place right now over about 80,000 uh, metric tons that we have to share on a first come, first serve basis with the U.S. and including others. Um, so it does create some challenge. But over time, as we strike a, uh, an actual trade agreement through CETA, you know, the, um, the volume could increase significantly. The wild card is going to be whether the, the major two larger packers are, are able to do business in a commercially viable way into that market. There are things that they do from a food safety intervention point of view that are um, you know, scientifically valid and, and certainly protect our food safety and our quality of our product that today the EU is, is um, not expressing interest in. So we have to reconcile that difference. In the meantime, there'll be small and medium-sized players. So the volumes you know, will continue to be small for a couple of years. Well, you know, when you look at the EU, you got to go beyond the countries that are that are going through the difficulty, and you know, eventually they'll they'll rebound in some way, shape, or form. Um, but the EU is a big place. There, there's many countries within that conglomerate that uh, that that will have great interest in Canadian beef, and so you know, we need to we need to express uh, and develop partnerships in individuals, whether that be Switzerland, you know, uh, getting into France or others. Um, there's there's strong demand. There's great population size in those markets, and uh, there's appreciation for high-quality products like Canadian beef. I think our greatest obstacle today is supply. Um, you know, if you're going to go do business with a market, having half of 1% market share doesn't allow you to flex your muscle very much. It doesn't allow you to be significant um, in, in a market, uh, you know, to be noticeably significant. Um, you know, we're, we're at that stage, uh, you know, a niche player. So um, supply is going to be a challenge. And, and I think the, the commitment to, to finance branding and marketing and promotion, the producers today, they've, they've afforded us, um, you know, I think um, a good revenue stream, and we appreciate that. But when you're competing against the likes of the United States and Australia and the budgets that they have, um, you have to ask yourself the question, if, if you want to go big, uh, you have to put more resource into it. And, uh, you know, you don't just do it by throwing money at the wall. Uh, you have to do it very strategically. And, and maybe we only look at certain markets to do that versus others. Well, you, you've got a Canadian government that's been a, a huge advocate for the industry. Um, you know, they've taken huge strides in, in international market development and access. Um, you know, our embassies and our trade commissioners around the world do incredible work. They're very dialed into the industry. They know the segments. They provide valuable information that allows the industry to make sound policy decisions and have... Um, have information that they can compute back to themselves and say, okay, I'm going to make my own business decision based on what I believe trends in that market might be. Um, the government has been a big help. And, and I also say that the beef industry is, has really improved in the way it works together. We, we still got ways to go. Um, nothing is ever perfect. But uh, there are a number of valuable forms that have been set up. And, and I think the way that the primary producers all the way, the packers, the way leaders in all of those segments of our value chain have, have been able to work together and, and get along has produced, um, I think, a lot of common thought and, and sound direction. And the government can, can leverage that to make the right decisions. And, and so far, so good.
even with cool, um, and you know that remains to be seen what the what the final sort of um, tie up will be with that when it all sorts itself out. But you're absolutely right. Like the the U.S. Um, has has once again come to appreciate Canada. I think there was a period where I don't know if we were sort of forgotten or they sort of questioned our our partnership. Uh, you know, how good of a neighbor are you really? We know you're there, but you know, will you really back us up? And uh, you know, we're a small nation, but we depend on our, uh, on each other for notably different things, uh, important things. And that and that border, while we need to maintain it from a security point of view, from a trade flow point of view, it's it's becoming less um, of a barrier. Um, and that's that's good news. I wouldn't say I'm concerned. You know, I. Uh, We've done, as, as Canada Beef, we've had a really good relationship. You mentioned Costco. We've had a strong relationship with them. And if you see what they've done in Canada, they have dedicated themselves to a pure 100% Canadian beef program. They are probably one of our strongest Canadian beef ambassadors. They pay accordingly. You know, their formula um, is unique in, in terms of moving volume and, and how you price to that. But if you look at the amount of, of, of product that they sell on an annual basis, and they, they project to grow the beef space, that's considerable value for our industry. They want high quality, they want the best cuts, they want to showcase all the attributes. Um, so as long as those entities are open to working with us, you know, to get the most out of what they want from us, and we're compensated accordingly, I don't think we should be worried that there may be fewer rather than more of those end users to do business with. It's where you start to get an end user that, that is only uh, cost conscious and doesn't recognize the value and, and compensate accordingly. That's where the industry has to say, perhaps you're not a partner for us, uh, we will take our business elsewhere. Mm -hmm.